There has been a nationwide effort for various Starbucks stores to unionize. And that is definitely exciting news, especially since we're seeing more and more labor activity, not just with Starbucks, but with various companies across the country. Now. They flexed their union muscles last week after one of the employees at a unionized Starbucks in Buffalo, New York tested positive for COVID. Meanwhile, Starbucks workers across the United States are petitioning for unions, but Starbucks apparently is doing anything and everything it can to prevent them from being able to do so. So let's start off with an update on the striking workers at the Buffalo Starbucks. On January 5th, workers at at the Elmwood Starbucks went on strike after one of them had tested positive for COVID. The strike comes about a barista tested positive for COVID-19 at a newly unionized location and roughly 10 others who were exposed went into isolation, leaving the store severely understaffed according to the workers. Now the workers are furious at the fact that they have not been given the protection necessary to keep themselves safe from COVID as they're working. Flying in the face of new recommendations by public health experts, these service workers are not given N95 masks during their shifts, nor are they given access to testing. Workers at the Elmwood location in Buffalo reported that at least one third of their staff has routinely been out sick over the last several weeks. Baristas are being forced to do double the work to make up for staffing shortages with no increase in pay. And John, this is something that we've been seeing with so many different companies across the board where they have staffing shortages or they haven't taken the proper precautions to keep their employees safe. So many of them will get sick with COVID and they'll be out and they don't have a plan in place. So the workers who remain aren't overworked. They just implement like mandatory overtime without additional pay, you know, a time and a half or double time. They don't do that. And so, in this case, since this newly unionized Starbucks store has the protection needed to engage in this strike, they're doing it and they're mm-hmm. demanding better working conditions. Yeah, it also shows how short sighted it is on the part of. Starbucks management or really any business to not take worker safety seriously to save a little bit of money on masks or on tests. And then what's the result? Well, you don't have the employees that you need to get the job done. And I don't think most people's experience walking to Starbucks is that pre pandemic, man, it's almost like you're in the line like for too little time. It was already pretty slow. So now they're saying they have to do twice the work. They're not being paid more, service is gonna be slower. That's gonna harm Starbucks and perhaps not just in the short term. If people's experience really sours for months at a time, that could be really damaging. It might make more just financial sense, let alone you know morally and in terms of public health and all that to do the testing and to do um, you know the mass making N95s available. But it's also a great reminder to the country that while most people I think when they think of unions think about like, periodic negotiations over pay and maybe benefits or something like that. And that is definitely an important part of unions. The pandemic is is reminding a lot of people that no, it's also that they're, they're, they've got your back. And those sorts of negotiations aren't just occasional, they're not just about pay. They're, they could be potentially about saving your lives. We're seeing that you know, with teachers unions like in Chicago, like they know that their membership is worried about literally getting sick, sent to the hospital or dying. And you need, like one teacher, can't necessarily shift a city's policy, but perhaps a union can. And to see that at the level of cafes too, these people have gotta be so sick of the way that they've been treated for more than a year and a half now. I like seeing some of them have the power to actually act out on it. Yeah, and this is honestly the only thing happening in the country that inspires me and gives me hope because while we see the failures of our federal government, even state and local governments in doing what's right to keep people safe or to ensure that people are treated well in the workplace, unions or or the labor activity that we're seeing um, it has been pretty successful. I mean, there's been countless examples and, and John Deere is the example that I like to give because they really did succeed in ensuring that the insane profits that John Deere has been making were shared a little more equally with the workers who actually do the work necessary to bring in that kind of revenue. And so in this case, the Starbucks workers aren't even asking for anything crazy. Mm-hmm. They have very simple 
like the simple asks, okay, so or demands. Uh, workers are demanding hazard pay, easy. Uh, N95 and KN95 masks and reimbursement for COVID-19 testing costs. Easy, give them the mask. Like the, what, how have they not been given masks? How are they not being reimbursed for COVID testing costs? Let me give you more. The workers are also demanding that they be allowed to review service to customers who do not comply with statewide mask mandates. Also common sense, but Starbucks so far has reacted the way that you would expect it to. Let's watch. We raised issues with the company over the last week about our um, exposure rate and about safety issues that weren't being dealt with or met. Um, and they said under no uncertain terms that um, as long as there are enough employees to meet the needs of the business, then everything was being taken care of. My response is that the needs of the business are not my concern. The needs of my coworkers are my concern, and we're standing up and saying that we need more protections, and we're not going to go back into the store until we feel that we're safe. Speak on it. I, that's exactly right. And I love the fact that they have the ability to strike now and uh, will continue to do so until their demands are met. Now, there's also some good news. I don't want this to be a downer uh, because if you look at what's happening across the country, their efforts at many different Starbucks stores to unionize. In fact, Bernie Sanders has uh, congratulated their efforts in a tweet. So in this tweet, he says, congratulations to Starbucks workers who are now organizing union shops across the country in New York, Arizona. Um, uh, Washington, Tennessee, Colorado, Oregon, Ohio, good luck. You know, there's so many different examples. Um, there's also, uh, there are also stores in Florida, New Jersey who uh, have petitioned for a union. And uh, much like the response they received in Buffalo, New York, in regard to their demands for simple things like K95 masks, the Starbucks stores have unfortunately reacted in a similar way to these efforts to unionize. And so I want to give you a little snippet from this video. It's in regard to an Arizona Starbucks store that's attempting to unionize. And here's what they've been met with from their management. They had a couple meetings where they split us up. They offered us pizza and stuff, you know, kind of like trying to get on our good side before telling us you have to vote no, so this is an anti-union meeting. And they're like, no, it's not. And so I asked them, I was like, are the only reasons you're having this meeting, one, to give us space to ask, and two, to vote no on unions? And they're like, yes, that is why we're having this meeting. And I was like, cool, that is literally anti-union. If you're telling me no to union, I don't know what you think anti means, but I think we can figure it out. Pre-filing, we had asked for an ASM. We do not qualify for an ASM or we're told that we don't make enough money for an ASM. Once we filed, that Monday, we actually were assigned a new store manager and now we had two ASMs. A week later, we found out that we had two store managers and three ASMs. And it's not like we're the only store in the district that needs help. We're just the only store they're choosing to pay attention to. And the only thing that sets us apart is that we file to unionize. It does feel kind of intimidating because there is these people that have the power to just, just take you out. You're not working there anymore for one reason or the other. They put me down as sick when I was only visiting my mom at the hospital because I had to cut off. And he's right about that. In fact, there have already been workers who have lost their jobs as a result of you know taking part in these organizing efforts. Let me give you an example. Brittany Harrison, for instance, a store manager from Arizona, Mesa, Arizona specifically, blew the whistle on Starbucks's tactic of importing managers from around the country to <laughs> Buffalo locations as a way of suppressing the union. As a result of speaking up, she who, by the way, she's currently undergoing chemotherapy to treat leukemia, face termination by the company. But here's the good news, and possibly the only like major upside of the Biden administration. Remember, the Biden administration is able to appoint pretty important people within the NLRB, and as a result, 
the NLRB is a lot more friendly to labor compared to what we experienced under the Trump administration. So let me give you details on that. So Starbucks was unable to stop the NLRB from clearing the store's request to hold an election. A US labor official granted a request by Arizona workers at Starbucks to hold an election that could expand the new unionized foothold at the retail coffee chain, rejecting the company's arguments against holding store by store votes. The National Labor Relations Board Regional Director ordered the ballots to be mailed out on January 14th to employees at a store in Mesa, Arizona, who will have until January 28th to return them. So that's great news. And one other piece of great news before I go to you, John, there's another Starbucks store that managed to unionize. Let's go to this tweet. Genesee Street becomes the second unionized Starbucks in the United States. So that's another one in Buffalo, New York to be specific. Yeah, yeah and you, you can see how seriously they're taking the threat and how seriously they took it you know, before there was even the first because success is gonna breed more attempts, which is gonna lead to more success. And especially once they're established and they start actually protecting the workers. Um, I would say, honestly, regardless of what way it goes with the Elmwood location, uh, that's gonna demonstrate to other workers, oh, this could actually be beneficial. Maybe it's worth the trouble and the success is gonna make them more willing to try. So I think Starbucks' fears were justified. We're probably gonna see a lot more of it coming soon. Yes, and uh, reported new reporting indicates that the striking Starbucks workers in Buffalo, New York are gonna report back to work on Monday, unfortunately. But th these are good steps, like we're headed in the right direction. And I like to see how much it's inspiring uh, labor activity, not just within Starbucks, but various companies across the country. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.